Doodle bud. We have another Italian pen here. This time it's from Mayora. This is the Aventus. And this particular color combo, this is la, the uh, Lapilo. Lapio. I don't know. Is it double L? Is it Y? That's in Spanish. Does that same hold true for Italian? Not too sure. Either way, there you go. This was sent to me by Apple Boom Pens for review purposes. I've always been interested in uh, this particular brand. This is my first one from them to check out, get my hands on. But this model here, because it has this interesting section, and I wasn't sure would that section be comfortable or not so much. I gotta tell you, I absolutely love this section. Been using this pen for about a week now. Works wonderfully, but there is a little bit of an issue I found. I think it's a one-off, but I'll go into those details for you. But let's get to it. This is a large pen, but it's not overly heavy, about 28 grams. I really like the weight of this pen, the cap there. I think it's about 10, yeah, so 18 in the body. 10 in the cap very comfortable i'll put the dimensions down in the description so you can uh, check those out exactly but let me compare a few other pens so you can just see visually what it looks like so quick visual uh, comparison we have a pelican m805 then the mayora this is made by marta Modena, but it's essentially a delta dolce vita pen Visconti Homo sapien Bronze Age, and then this is a Delta Right Balance. Let's get you a close-up of the pen. So there's lots of different resins they use, as I said on here. You got some nice depth to the treatment there of the pen, right in the pen body, but this is the Lapio uh, coloring that they got. This is the Palladium trim. They also have it in Ruthenium, and then they have all sorts of other um, gorgeous resins and colors as well. They have these nice details like the cap band here, right? So it's it's put in there. So that's not laser engraved. That's, uh, you know, they got some detail work to get that in there. You can see what it looks like. I don't need to describe it to you. That's why we got video. What an amazing technology. But here you go. We've got the classic wheel on Italian pen clips. Like a lot of Italian pens have the wheel on the clip. Very, very, very common. I'm actually going to show you how common some of the Italian features are because I can swap parts between all these pens, no problem. So it's quite, it's quite interesting as well. Cat comes off one turn, really like that feature. There is an issue though, it's down here in the cap. Uh, I'm gonna show you that here in just a second, but uh, we'll get to that in a moment. It does post, which is quite nice and it's quite comfortable. It doesn't overly backweight the pen because it's not crazy heavy and this fits in my hand quite nice. I usually write with it um, unposted, it's, it's still, you know, comfortable that way too, if you want the extra length on the pen and just don't know where to put your cap, there you go. The section is very comfortable. I do like that sort of hourglass shape to it. It just puts your hand right in there. That's, you know, I hold my pen like that. It's quite comfy. Depending on what you do, that may not work for you, but there you go. These pens come with a number six Yovo style nib, and you can see we got the size stamped into the nib, but then the logo and all that, that is done through laser treatment as well. Writes quite well. They have the standard nib sizes, your extra fines all the way up uh, through stubs, and they even have a flexible one as well, which is kind of cool. I haven't tried that one out, so I don't know what it's like. When well, they got your body, un comes undone, and there you see your basic bits, and the focus just doesn't care at all about showing you what this looks like. So this is quite interesting. So let's just take these apart here real quick. Uh, oh, I should mention on here too, uh, blind cap on the back, so you can access the converter. Now, this is a bit of an odd one. Uh, it says, I checked other sites as well. It says it comes with a converter, mine didn't. It could have just been something that came up because they put this together for review purposes. They might've forgotten that. So it does take a standard, international converter no problem took that from another pen with the blind cap action uh, and just from the description other stuff i've seen they have a converter that's sort of going to be like this with an extender so what you can do um you know depending however it's it's not a big deal to take the body off but if you don't like doing that game you just take off the blind cap there you go screw that down and then you can access the converter from here and drive it up and down up and down so just like i can do in some other italian pens too but like i said i i believe they do come with a converter back to the interesting part with italian pens and uh, the swappability of everything okay so let's just take some sections out and start swapping them across pens i will take uh, this red section oh this actually will probably look nice with this and it screws in there. Now I'm not gonna go all the way because they do have this O-ring on here. This doesn't have the cutback that uh, the Delta does to fit it, but you can see it's the same thread, same everything, which is quite interesting. I can take uh, this, here we go, the Mayora, go into the Marta Modena, and then we'll take Marta Modena into the Delta. So that's quite interesting. Now the caps aren't interchangeable because the diameters and stuff are a little bit different, but uh, 
it just goes to show you uh, there's a few thread profiles that the Italian pen makers really like to use. With that aside, let's get into the interesting part. So the pen has been working perfectly. The nib out of the box was wonderful, smooth. The tuning was great. It, the flow was bang on. Everything's great. Um, used it for a few days. No problems whatsoever. Left it capped. And then just to see how it seals, came back about a week later. And I noticed there was something going on in the nib. There were some crusties. There was some goo. Now, this I did notice this when I was, uh, you know, capping and uncapping the pen. I thought it was maybe these threads or something like that. But when you cap it, you hear a crunching sound. Let me go up to the mic so you can hear it too. So that's not the sound you want to hear. And so I noticed this. Let me turn the flash on so I can show you the details. So if we look in here, you can see we got some tool chatter going on from this process, from the machine. And so what happens is um, you can see your threads are in here and then there's a cleanup pass to get rid of the threads. And we, it looks like we got some chatter. And then if we look further down in the pen, that is not a very good finish on that machining. We got lots of fuzzies going on. And I thought that can't be standard how they finish a pen. And so if I look into the main body, it is really, really smooth and everything's fine there. I thought, let's just, let's get in there like I normally do. Let's get out the endoscope and show you some inside footage. In with the endoscope, you can see here the finish isn't what it should be. I think something got stuck on the tooling during the machining and kind of gave it that finish, but those little bits get stuck in the nib. I think this also got missed because it's a flat black resin versus one of those beautiful shiny swirly ones you would you'd pick up on that right away. You can contrast that with what we have in the barrel. It even has like a rifling on the machining. It looks really nice and clean. So this is what it should be. If you ever get a pen like this, reach out to the retailer, whoever you bought it from, they'll help you out. You know, things happen. So as you can see, my guess what caused that is just some goo, you know, some swarf, some chips, whatever it is, got entangled on the tooling. It, this is going to be CNC machined, obviously, and uh, just didn't give the right finish on there. And that's what, tri what you're left with. So that I think that'd be a one-off. If you got a pen like this and that happened inside of the cap, whatever, what color it was, definitely reach out to Apple Boom. They'll help you out with those types of things, right? So uh, yeah, I think that just got missed in there. But what, what ended up happening is some of the crud would get into the nib and it would clog it up here a bit too. And also it interacted with the ink too and made it get all kind of crusty and weird too. But uh, so I've cleaned it up now. I'm going to re-ink it. We'll write with it in just a moment. Outside of that issue there, I'm very confident the other pens don't have this type of finish. I've, I've seen other pictures and stuff, and I, that this is this is just an anomaly. Um, the machining of the pen, all the fitment of the parts is is quite good. The clip works nice. It's uh, you know it's a stiff one. Um, it, yeah, I I I don't really put I, well one I don't put these pens in shirt pockets. My shirts don't have pockets. Um, maybe a suit pocket I'll put a, a, a pen into, but I still always worry about something happening or maybe it falls out or something like that. But it's a sturdy clip, maybe not the easiest to go over a thick shirt. It could be a little more friendly for something like that, but it is secure nonetheless. I got the converter with the extender on here, so I figured let's show you what it's like to ink one of these up using the blind cap, because it is kind of a neat little feature. You can just do it that way instead of the whole production of taking everything out. The ink I'm using, Private Reserve. This is their Ultra Black. I actually really, uh, I really like this black. The one thing I don't like are the Private Reserve bottles. They are mega wide. Um, and then what ends up happening, you get this big ring of ink. And so you got to like wipe that all out before you put it back on the bottle or else it's going to leak everywhere. And, uh, and also too, like the ink level goes down because it's so wide, <laughs> like you got to get the nib in there. So there's a whole bunch of ink at the bottom. You can't really get to, you're going to have to mess around with some other stuff. So, uh, I would like to see them change their bottle design. It's just, it, I don't know if they're going to do that, but just as a tip from fountain pen users, you, uh, if Private Reserve sees this, I like your inks, but your bottles, they are unique. They're not the most convenient when it comes to filling pens, especially as uh, the ink level depletes. Let's wipe this up and write it up. Here we have the Mayora Ventus Lapilo. 
Again, it's a medium nib. This nib just, yeah, it's quite nice. I mean, it's a Yovo. You probably felt, if you felt the good Yovo medium nib before, this is what it is. Um, but it's quite nice. The flow is bang on. Yeah, really, really good. I have had zero troubles with hard starting ink flow. Let's see what the reverse is like. I really, they're not, unless you like tune and tune up and smooth out a nib to write in reverse, it's luck of the draw. So if you get one that's a phenomenal reverse writer, this one's not too bad. You can't guarantee that on all of them. Overall though, it's it's just really good. It's performed just nonstop, whether you wanna do some nice printing, your cursive writing, however your style is, whatever you do. Um, yeah, very comfortable, very, very comfortable. The resin with this one is quite interesting. It has a, sort of a matte black finish versus a lot of other pens that are similar to this have nice glossy finishes. You can get, uh, they have it in, in a gloss one as well. It's got a different name to it, but it does have a nice tactile texture feeling now. it's. It's not like a Visconti Homo sapien, which is, has a lava resin <laughs> uh, that's in there, but it uh, you can see it's got the difference, but it, it seems to have a little bit of a porosity to it. Some of the qualities, of course, not the same, but it does have a nice grip to it. it it's mega comfortable. I like the looks of it too, that flat black that goes with it. I think the ruthenium versus the palladium finish would really make this be a cool looking black pen, but uh, yeah, very comfortable. I've had zero issues with it other than um, a little QC issue at the factory. Uh, this pen has been great. So I've been wondering about these pens, how they feel, how they look, are they built well? Is that section really comfortable? And yes, it is an extremely comfortable pen to work with. So I've been pretty happy with it. Like I said, sounds a little issue there, but I think that is a bit of an anomaly. But that being said, QC should, you know, they should catch something like that. But thanks again to Apple Boom for lending me this pen for review purposes. There's a subscribe button. It's right there. You should hit it. See what happens. Let's chat in the comments. We'll leave it there for now. We'll catch you next time.